Now we need to make sure that we link against this converter framework when we uh, build our application. Well, if you click on the products group, you'll see that it's added the build product that this converter target is going to build, the converter.framework. We can just take that and drag it into the link binaries with libraries build phase of our application target, and that will tell our application to link against the built converter.framework when you build the application. But we haven't actually built that framework yet. If I was to hit build right now, well, there are two different targets. Which one is it going to build? There's the notion of an active target. If you go to the project menu, you'll see set active target, and we can choose which target is currently active. The active target is the target that will be built when you click build. We're trying to build our application here, so let's leave the application as the active target. But we also want to build our framework when we build our application. And in fact, if we ever change the framework and then go over to build the application, we want to make sure that the latest version of the framework is built along with it. So let's set up a target dependency. That'll make the framework target automatically build whenever we build our application target. To do that, we're going to open an info panel on the application target. You can do that by selecting the application target in the Groups and Files pane and clicking on the Info button in the toolbar, or the command, uh, keyboard shortcut is Command-I, and it'll open up a panel with several tabs here. Here we want to go to the General tab, and you see that there's a large box for dependencies with a plus and minus button at the bottom. Let's click the plus button, and it'll give us a list of all the available targets that we could de make this application target depend on. We'll choose the converter target, go ahead and create that dependency, we can close our info panel, and let's see what happens when we build. Let's open up the build results window, and let's go ahead and click build. And you can see it builds, uh, if we scroll up a little bit, you can see it builds the converter framework first, and then it builds our application target. Let's try and run it and see if it worked. Here's our converter. Uh, it's supposed to be 69 degrees in San Francisco today, so we can type that in, and we can see what that is in Celsius. So there's a two-target project with a dependency, one's linking against the other, but we have the source files for both targets in the same project. Let's go back to our slides. Uh, there's going to be time for questions at the end. We'll get to that, though. So there's some settings which control how your targets are built when you click build. Things like, what do I want to name the built product? Do I want to generate debug symbols? What architectures do I want to build for? These are called build settings. And since you generally have different sets of build settings that you want to use at different times, for example, when I'm building day to day, I may just want to build for whatever architecture I'm currently on, so I can quickly edit, build, debug, edit, build, debug. But then when I release, I need to make sure that I'm building universal, so I need different settings for releasing my project from building uh, for releasing my project and for building day to day. These sets of build settings that we give you are called build configurations. Now each build setting in a build configuration, these build settings are kind of akin to uh, make file variables in a make file. Each build setting has a, a make file variable like name, all caps with underscores instead of spaces, and also a more verbose readable name that tells you what, what the setting actually is. And each project has a set of build configurations with these settings, whereas where each configuration will uh, set the settings for the same project, same source files you're going to build, but each configuration will let you build it in a different way. Let's go to our demo, and I'll show you what I mean. We're going to go ahead and open up our next demo project.
And here I told you before that the root group, that, that applic uh, project icon with the name of the project and the groups and files tree, that, that represented the project. Well, in fact, if we open an info panel on that, it'll give us the settings for the project. One of those tabs is the configurations tab. We can go, over, go ahead and click on the configurations tab. And you can see the different build configurations we have in this project. Two, debug, release. Pretty simple. These are the configurations you'll get by default when you create a new project. But you can add new ones by duplicating an existing configuration. You can remove them and so forth. Let's go over to the build settings tab. So each of those configurations has a set of build settings. You can see the, uh, the human readable friendly name on the left. And you can see the value on the right. And you notice some of these are bold, some of them aren't bold. What's that mean? Well, the ones that aren't bold, they have the base value that you get if you haven't explicitly set your own value. The ones that are bold, those settings have been customized in the project. A new value has been set there that's different than the base value. We can go up to the collections pop-up, and there's a customized settings option, and that'll show you all the settings that we have customized in this project. And when you create a new project, it'll come with some customized settings. So this is a quick way to find the settings that you've changed. Now say, uh, say in this application, we want to, when we build day to day for debugging purposes, have some debugging log statement. But when we release it to our customers, we don't want that debugging information logged. It's a pretty common thing to do, right? So one way people do that often is by using a preprocessor directive to turn on and off debug logging. If we go back to our project window and open up our source file, scroll down, you can see that we have a preprocessor directive that makes the debugging log statement conditional on whether or not the debug preprocessor macro has been defined. So how do we control whether that macro is defined? We, we want it defined when we're debugging, not defined when we're releasing. So let's use the debug and release configurations. Let's uh, go, go ahead and close the source file, go back and open an info panel on the project, and uh, let's show all our settings again. Well, we want to set a preprocessor macro. It's the easiest way to figure out how to do that. There's a little filter box in the info panel here. And if we just try typing in preprocessor, it'll filter down the available build settings. We can find what we want. Well, look there near the bottom. It says preprocessor macros. If we click on that, you notice in the bottom, it describes our build setting for us. At the end of the description, there's also that all caps with underscores name. That's the makefile variable like name of this build setting. Let's go ahead and edit that build setting. And uh, which, let's uh, actually close that quickly. Let's take a look at, uh, we are, you can see there's a little pop-up that shows which configuration we're editing. We're currently editing the debug configuration. It's important to know which one we're, we're looking at. Let's go ahead and edit that again.